The country of Mexico has produced some fairly interesting drivers to race in IndyCar. Previously, we've talked about drivers like Michelle Jourdain Jr. and Rodolfo Gonzalez, two drivers with very intriguing backgrounds and careers. Today, we talk about Mimo Gidley, a man who risked everything to live his racing dream. Welcome back to All IndyCar, the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. Mimo Gidley was born in La Paz, Mexico on September 29th, 1970. Born to a fisherman and a freelance writer, Gidley would spend most of his childhood between Mexico and Northern California. He had multiple interests as a kid, including sailing and BMX bikes, but most importantly, motorsports. By the age of 11, his family had bought him his first ever motocross bike, which he raced for the next 10 years in Baja, California and the southwestern United States. In 1991, Mimo Gidley would attend his first ever IndyCar race at Laguna Seca. He would be sat at the corkscrew for this race and he would fall in love with racing. From this point on, Mimo Gidley was dead set on becoming an IndyCar driver, and thankfully for us, he would try and reach that goal. He would move to Monterey, California shortly after this to become a mechanic for the Jim Russell Racing School, with a deal to also race in the USAC Russell Racing Championship. Mimo kicked a lot of faces in during his rookie season in cars, leading to 9 wins in the 11 race season and the championship that year. This is impressive enough, but it's even more of an achievement when you realize that Mimo was homeless throughout most of this year and living in his car. The next few years in his life would be undocumented. Even on his website, there isn't anything said about this time in his life. The next racing results I could find from him would be in the USF 2000 series in 1995. This season got off to a pretty rough start with an early retirement in the first race in Phoenix. However, he would make this up with a win later that weekend. He finished off this season with two more wins at Mid-Ohio and IRP two runner-up finishes at Atlanta and New Hampshire, and other good finishes sprinkled throughout the year. In a close battle for the championship with Jared Schrader, Mimo lost the title by only 7 points. 1996 would see Mimo race in the American City Racing League for only two races, where he finished on the podium in both starts, including one win that year. Along with this, he would also race in the Barber Dodge Pro Series this season, but this season wasn't good. For the next two seasons, Gidley raced in the Toyota Atlantic Series, where he found a fair bit of success. Even though he didn't win the championship in 1997 or 1998, he would finish second and third in the championship these two seasons. Gidley and Lynx Racing would get five wins, nine podiums, and 15 top fives across their time together in the Toyota Atlantic series. Kart teams were still happy with Mimo's pace and decided to promote him into the series for 1999. However, Mimo wouldn't get good equipment to show off his talents. For the 1999 kart season, Mimo Gidley would race for Walt Walker Motorsports and Payne Coin Racing with part-time schedules with both teams. Starting 10 races that year, Mimo Gidley DNF'd 4 times and had a best finish of 11th at Cleveland. 2000 was just as unremarkable for Mimo, although he was given better equipment in Forsyth Racing and Della Pena Motorsports. 4 DNFs became 6th, but his best finish would improve to 6th. 2001 was going to be his greatest shot, as he signed with Chip Ganassi Racing. However, the Chip Ganassi Racing Mimo joined was far different from the powerhouse team from just a year prior. Reigning Indy 500 champion and 1999 car champion Juan Pablo Montoya had left the team to join Williams in Formula 1, while 1996 car champion Jimmy Vassar was leaving too. Kart, along with Chip Ganassi, had entered a downward spiral too, so this move for Mimo was a double-edged sword in a way. After a disappointing first seven races, Nicholas Miezen was fired and replaced by Mimo Gidley. Mimo's time with the team had occasional moments of brilliance with podiums at Cleveland, Houston, and Laguna Seca. Those moments were the only good moments of the year, as for most of the season, he wasn't even in the top ten. He also made some fairly stupid mistakes at Road America and Portland, just to name two. This would sadly be the end of the road for Mimo, as after this season came to an end, he would only make three more starts between Champ Car and the Indy Racing League. After his Indy Car career was over, Mimo would move to the world of sports cars, where he's made a solid career that is still ongoing as of me making this video in early 2022. The only hiccup in the road was the 2014 Daytona 24, when Mimo would suffer a broken back and other injuries in a terrible crash about three hours into the race. Since then, he's made a full recovery and continues to win races in GT America to this day. Mimo Gidley's story is one of the most inspirational I've covered in this series. He grew a racing career from pretty much nothing 
and sacrificed a lot to make that racing career work. Although he didn't find much success in kart, he can't say he was a bad driver. He went from seeing his first IndyCar race to racing in IndyCar in only 7 years. That's a meteoric rise through the ranks for anyone and it should be remembered by the media and fan base alike. 